it seems like the Niners have four good offensive linemen on their team. And after that, it's kind of uh, dire. I mean, I don't know if they have a starting caliber right guard on the roster. Maybe maybe Brunskill is, although he's really struggling in camp. And then after that, their backups pretty rough. One of them is now – I mean, Trent Williams should be back week one, so I'm, let's not even go there. But do you think – like, is, is this – such a critical issue that it's going to hold the Niners back from being as good as they could be. I think so. Uh, I think it's a big deal. It's, it's a huge deal, especially I've, I talked about it before about how uh, I think the, the offensive line is so critical to the development of a young quarterback. Um, and if their starting offensive line is, is going to have problems and then there's no depth behind it, because I guarantee you they're going to, they're going to have an injury at some point in the year. Someone's going to have to fill in for somebody. Um, you don't, if you're going to end up playing Lance, you don't want to have him getting, feeling pressure and getting crushed. Um, I know there's a lot of things you can do to protect him, but, um, and then obviously we know that the Jimmy has durability issues, right? So, you know, whether it's Jimmy or Lance in there, I think it's going to, it's problematic. Um, and then additionally, especially, from what I've seen in, in the preseason, they haven't really been able to run the ball that effectively either. Um, so if they can't run the ball effectively, and I, I know part of it too is is Kyle's not really scheming. So um, he can he can scheme open up open runs. Um, but uh, if they can't run the ball effectively, then they're not a great pass protecting line as it is. So I mean, there's Trent, Trent Williams and then that's it as far as like great craft factors on that on that line. You know, it's interesting that the Niners drafted Trey Sermon. He may turn out to be a fine player, but they really needed to get uh to nail the cornerback spot and to nail um this and to probably get another wide receiver too. And um they got Trey Sermon. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Uh, I don't know yeah. about Aaron Banks. I mean I I just to me and this is my overall I think with this with this team and this front office and who they have, they shouldn't draft running backs and linebackers high because they can find they've proven they can find them. Like look at Jonas Griffith, look at right. look at Al Shazier, look at Dre Greenlaw, Greenlaw. Yeah. look at even in, in um uh Fred Warner, right? So the, for, right. Yeah. You you guys have proven you can take lesser picks and make them into all pros. Yeah. You you can take UDFAs and make them into starters. You don't need to be it's like it's like if you're if you're it's like if you're a country and, and you know you you have a bunch of oil but you're still importing oil. Why? Like importing Yeah, I always apples. feel like the Niners are like well, we don't really have that many needs, so let's just go for the running back here. It's like, well, you kind of have a need at wide receiver. I mean, if the yeah. ball keeps getting hurt, that's kind and, of thing. Yeah. And, and running back running back I mean, this this staff has has the guy that's been that's been um, coaching their their running backs has been doing it since he was on the Broncos, finding guy like random guys and like turning them a thousand yards. Yeah, thousand yeah, that's, that's what it. I don't get. I mean, the, the yeah. shit I've been doing this since I was like in third grade. I don't get it. That's that, but that that's why use these things that you do well as an asset because it means you can you can take your picks and you don't have to pick a running back high. You don't have to pick a linebacker high. Go. Use it on stuff that you don't do well, and give yourself more chances. Like at corner, like yeah. I mean, at guard, like right. at tackle, like. <laughs> Jody says, Grant, the season we went to the Super Bowl, didn't Jimmy throw six interceptions in one day? Everyone was doomsday then too. Why so much focus this go around? Well, I think it's the fact that it's not that Jimmy's thrown six in one day. It's every day he makes the same mistake every day. And I feel like it's a carryover also from last season when you do a bunch of picks last year. Uh, I think it's it, – and it's also showing why the Niners traded up for Trey Lance. It's not because Jimmy gets hurt sometimes. It's because he throws all these interceptions and is uh, makes big mistakes even when he's playing well. Uh, if they just wanted someone like an insurance policy for him when he's hurt, they would have taken Mac Jones at 12 or Kelly Mond in round three. Like they have big problems with Jimmy because of this stuff. And yeah. I think it's an issue. Like, also, he, he's been in the league two years longer. You'd think he would fix this at some point, and he's not. I think it's a problem. And it's it's, it's not like they're, you know, 
making up their mind about Jimmy Garoppolo. They already traded for his replacement. They already had the referendum on him. This is just further confirmation of why they made the decision they did. Yeah, and, and if you look at even his the the the, the most sick people would tout twenty nineteen as his most successful year. He was like I think he was like fifth or sixth most had the fifth or sixth highest interception, interception rate while throwing right. like the the lowest air yards per attempt or like top bottom three with Breeze and, and uh, Carr. Right, and and uh, most people know this, but the, like turnovers are one of the major 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 determining determining win loss factors. So, oh yeah, much if you have third down conversion yeah. percentage. Much if you have a quarterback that's turning the ball over, it's it you're, you're less either winning like, in spite of him, basically. Think about think about what the Niners could have done if they if that year in 2019, if they had a different if they had a a top ten quarter one of those higher level quarterbacks, would they might have been undefeated? Or that just yeah. to me it just shows you it just shows you how good that that team was that, that team year. Was. I mean. They they won in the playoffs without a quarterback. I mean, Jimmy did he did make some plays in the Super Bowl, right? I think he left a lot on the field, and you know we all know the post he did hit. But they did actually have to use him in the Super Bowl. But like in the Vi- versus the Vikings, and obviously, and then Green Bay, like mm, it was like a non. I mean, Green Bay was pretty much the most of game, and then uh, Kyle shut him down versus the Viking- Vikings because he threw the pick, right? So yeah. Um, I just think people attribute so much success to him. And I think he gets – it's fair because I do think there is some of that. Like I, I do – I think – I do think you can attribute an intangible quality to to winning with quarterbacks. You see it in Tom Brady. So I will – I'll give him some of that. But I, I just don't think his – Yeah. Things that he does, the things the that same. he does wrong don't, don't supersede – they're not good enough to supersede the intangibles that he brings. I feel like what like the people in Jimmy's corner are like, look, don't overanalyze practice. He wins in games. And what I say is like, no, he used to. If you look at his last 10 starts, I want to say 11 starts, like the six last year, the three in the Super Bowl and the last two in 2019, the three in the playoffs and the last two in 2019. He's what is that? That's 11. I think he's six and five. And I think he's got a TD to INT ratio of one to one, 10 picks, 10 touchdowns in those last 11 games. And then you look at him in camp this year, 11 touchdowns, 10 picks. It's the same thing. And everyone was like, well, he was hurt last year. Well, he wasn't hurt the last two weeks of 2019. He wasn't hurt in the playoffs. He wasn't hurt week one. I mean, a lot of people played through injuries. I think this is a trend. I think he's regressing. I think the book is out on him. And I think we're seeing a, a long, slow collapse. Uh, yeah. I think we're still seeing it. Let me let me ask you a question on this. Do you think do you think if the stats were flipped in in practice and Trey Lance were throwing all these picks, would this? Where, would people be like, "Well, oh, you can't he's play him. He's, he's you bust. can't play him. He's throwing interceptions." Dude. Yeah, like, he's got to learn to not throw picks in, in practice before you can even give him a chance in a game. But when Jimmy does this, like, hey, we're talking about practice. It's no big deal. That's what bugs me. I feel like they're graded on totally different scales. Jimmy can do whatever the hell he wants in practice because because. I don't know. And Trey has to be perfect. I don't like yeah. that. And like every, every every day, it's a referendum on Trey. Well, he was 8 for 14. I mean, he missed some throws high. What about Jimmy's interception? Well, he bounced back after the interception. Who cares if he bounced back after the interception? It was freaking practice. He shouldn't have thrown the interception to begin with. And Right. And and the difference is you should be more – it should be the reverse because yeah. Lance is the rookie. When right. he's making mistakes in practice – He's, That's the he's, place to make him. Yeah, right. Learning. Or, or even in, or even the game. If he misses stuff in, in the game, he's going to be more liable to to correct those things because younger players do. That's why, as a coach, even in high school, if if I've got two guys that are two guys that are close, I'm playing the younger kid because he's going to get more, that experience is going to be more value to him, and he's going to have there's going to be more of a chance of him developing at a, at a greater rate than the 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 older guy and we're talking about here we're talking about eight years versus versus zero years zero years yeah (laughs) you know so and the the fact alone if if lance got drafted trey lance was in middle school if lance is gonna walk in the door and not and like let's say he misses he misses like he's erratic a little bit but he doesn't turn the ball over i'll take that over what what jimmy brings because he's not going to turn the ball over and right you're gonna and he's still gonna be a big make still gonna be able to and make, he'll make big plays as well and jimmy doesn't make big plays does turn the ball over that's a, a, 
a frustrating combination. It's frustrating. How are yeah. you doing that? You're a game and, manager. Manage the game. Right. And and I'm going to tell you guys, the, the you're going to start seeing, I think, if Jimmy has turned the ball over and he is, he is playing, he's turned the ball over, you'll, the defense is going to be the first ones that are going to start clamoring yeah. for Lance because those are the guys. Defense, we hate. We hate quick change. Like yep. we like yep. we make a stop and then we got to go back out there because yep. the quarterback just threw a pick and then it makes us look Again. bad because yeah. we just we just stopped we just stopped these guys and now we got to go back we're on our own 30 and then yep. we give them a touchdown and everyone's like oh your defense sucks. Well you you put us on the 30. Like <laughs> like that's a good point. Joshua says I'm all for Lance but Jimmy is a gutsy thrower and some of those passes we are never going to see from Lance. What? Did you, Joshua, did, 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 you, did you, Joshua? Did you watch the last game? That was a, I like. I love you, Joshua. God love you. I don't really feel like arguing with this on you because I feel like we're just seeing something different. But <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for that five. Thanks for that. I cool appreciate five. it, man. Kid, give Lance a chance. I watch him a lot. He he uh, really thinks he can throw the ball through the defense. He's like far. Um, you ever hear coaches say that little football cliche? Um, he can throw the ball through the uh, car wash and not get it wet. Yeah, that's Lance. He throws that hard. He's not really worried about underneath coverage. He thinks he can power it through everything. So uh, Jimmy, on the other hand, is over here throwing just three flies up off his back foot. I don't know. We'll see. Let's see what happens tomorrow. But I appreciate the donation. I'm not yeah. going to ridicule someone who's giving me five bucks. Nah. I just see it differently, man. So have a good one. That's our show today. I got to go catch a flight and get back so I can watch this game on television like a true pro. Coach, Yeah. thank you. Oh, hold on, James. Oh, oh, oh. haven't drafted a good old line since 2010. Ooh, that's true. When are you going to step up as QC coach for the draft? You take too many offseason maintenance day. <laughs> oh, ouch. That's ouch. True. You're right, you know, man. He'll, he'll watch film this year. Watch watch yeah. film this year. Watch the, watch the draft prospects. They need help. Adam Peters ain't getting it done on the O-line. I'm Trent Balky's laughing over here. Although he turned no. out drafted Josh Garnett, so he shouldn't be laughing. Uh, <laughs> Phrase 32 says, Grant, why so cynical sometimes? You have some decent takes, but sometimes it feels like you're going for Bayless-like over-the-top takes. See, I, here's the thing, I, the difference between me and the guy with the spreadsheet. I feel like I just say what I feel definitively. And other ways to do sports journalism is to kind of just ride the fence and hedge your bets and not give too much praise or criticism to anyone. That way you don't anger any fans like phrase who want to hear a specific no, i'm not saying some fans want to hear a specific thing and if you kind of sort of never take a stand you please those fans so i don't think that i'm cynical i'm just being honest and i'm not always right so keep that in mind right but and and when you are when you are wrong you've walked things back before so it's oh yeah i walk <laughs> i walk back hard I, I don't have too much pride to do that i'm a, I'm a world champion back peddler let me just say yeah uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> And on that note, this that's the end. Hey, that's yeah, the end guys, just note. real guys, real quick, just just to let you guys know, um, I've been talking to uh, Rob Shu, and I think we're we're aiming to do a uh, play by play next week for the for the next game. So keep nice. uh, keep tuned on that. We'll probably be on Rob's Rob's channel. Okay. So um, yeah, so you don't have to hear. Uh, you guys don't have to hear Trey area. No. I bet you Rob says it though. Make sure you say it. <laughs> <laughs>